Alrighty, welcome back to the Decently Indecent podcast. Zach Shutt, thank you so much for being here, man. Honored to have you on the podcast to sit down and chat for a little bit. You are, uh, for those listening, for those watching, um, an, an entrepreneur. You are the sure. CEO of MetaPCs. From what I can tell on the internet, a high performer, you the owner of multiple businesses, a father and a family man. What is your North Star that makes you hungry to wake up and get after it every day? I like building stuff. I love I like that building answer. stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I like I like building stuff, and I, more importantly, I like doing uh, building stuff with my friends. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like everything that I've created has not been like a soul creation. Like it's a part of a bunch of people that have made it. So like that's what guides me is I like to build shit. That's that's in doing it with simple. doing it with other people. I think is is incredibly key. Yeah, I, for uh, sure. One of my, I think, shortcomings in what I'm something I'm trying to rectify now is I don't want to say it's a shortcoming, but in, in what I've done over the last several years, six, seven, eight years on YouTube, and I've been able to create a business that uh, has provided a, a nice life for my family and I, and I'm super grateful. But and I have pockets of communities where I go and see people that I align with, like uh, Texas range day, which I've talked about on this podcast recently. I even saw you briefly there one time years ago, we were just talking about that, uh, yeah. before we started recording. Um, but in new England, in the Boston area where I'm from, I, I don't have like a, a community that like does the YouTube thing. And I'm kind of looking to, to start that type of thing up here. And that's part of the reason why I wanted to start this podcast was to not only have cool interviews with people I respect and admire via the internet and the broadband, but to be able to bring people in on the couch and get that IRL, IRL energy, excuse me, because as you know, as someone who likes to build things and do it with people you love, you can't, it's hard to replicate the energy of doing shit with people in real life, even as great as the internet is. Uh, it's impossible. Yeah. If you don't, yeah. if you're not people like in the same proximity, that's always been tough for me too, is like, how do you end up building a relationship with people when you're not able to spend at least some amount of time in the same room? Yes. You know what I mean? So I do have businesses that I run with people that are in other states and stuff, but that proximity time is so important. Like whether that's carving out, you know, a couple of weeks or months or whatever. Yeah. That's a, it's a definitely key. Cause you just don't get the same, same vibe. You, know you don't. I mean? And yeah. I imagine as someone who, you know, is, has uh, what I like to say this, I, I probably overuse it is just, you have a lot of irons in the fire, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Your hands are a lot sure. of candy baskets. You got, you're running a lot of businesses. I would imagine meta PCs is what is, takes up most of your time. That's kind of your main role, your main baby. Um, is it, do you have, you probably have to be very intentional with that, what I call pressing the flesh, like getting in the same room mm -hmm. with people. Obviously there's certain things that you can tend to remotely, but there's times where it's like, hey, let's get in a room together, figure this out. Maybe it's tackling a problem. Maybe it's brainstorming some new ideas. How sure. often are you like traveling around to do that? Or are you able to handle most of that out of, uh, I guess, Arizona is where you guys are based? Yeah, right it, it depends. It's um, It depends on what the goal is, right? Because there's the goals yeah. of like growing the business, which is like going and, and meeting with suppliers and stuff. And that requires flying out. There's also personal growth. So mm -hmm. I fly out a lot to meet with um, like our, our buddy Oompa, Caleb. Yes. That you had on the show. Yeah. I went out to to meet with him and Caleb Francis as Love well. Love Caleb another, Francis. Another friend of mine. He's and, one of the um, biggest motherfuckers I've ever seen. He's massive. He's I want to be like him when I grow up. He's yeah. huge. <laughs> like, like, so fly out and meet with those guys. And that's obviously it's for the business, but it's also yes. like, I really respect those guys and Same. I want to learn from them. Mm -hmm. Like Caleb, I want to be big and strong. Caleb Francis, you know, <laughs> big and strong. And Oompa, like, holy crap, hell of a business guy. So yep. much to learn from. So there's, there's trips like that that are more like me getting out of my comfort zone yes. and meeting with people IRL and like. Yep kind of trying to overcome some of the anxiety and stuff and just getting in the same room with creators and, and trying to learn from what they do, because I think that applies to business as well. So yep. if it's like a good, if it's a good use of time where I can grow personally, even outside the business, I'll, I'll obviously take the time to, to do that. I think it's important. I, I totally agree with you. I, in my years doing YouTube, I've wrestled with those same things where it's easy to get comfortable in the operation that you've built at home, but there's so much value to traveling, uh, networking with people, going to meet people, not like you said, not just 
for the, you know, what can this do for my business, but for the personal growth side of things too. Now, I know you had mentioned, and, and I had this, I had this in a question. I will, as a disclaimer, I do write, you know, loosely, I loosely scripted. I have a couple questions, but I like to, I'm a little, I'm a little bit of a tangent guy, you know, I, mean, That's I, cool. I, That's I like cool, to go man. off the rails a little bit. And I, I think I had somewhere on here, um, because I always like to ask this, uh, of people that are entrepreneurs and that run their own businesses. Um, but just the anxiety thing, right? Like you had mentioned yeah. that you struggle with anxiety. I know a lot of people do in their own ways. Some people, uh, certainly worse than others. I do myself. That's, that's, you know, anytime you're talking about traveling somewhere new and there's a lot of people, there's going to be a lot of things going on. You just, we all have that general layer of kind of social anxiety that you have to fight through. But I've found in my life that you know, anytime I'm presented with that option to be like, man, that's out of my comfort zone, a little scary. Like maybe I should come up with an excuse, right? That's the first that place your mm -hmm. mind goes to. Anytime I, I say, fuck that, I do it anyway. It's like, you, you never, ever regret it. You're always, something cool either happens for your business or you meet a new person that you really vibe with. You, you build a new relationship. Like there's, there, there's just never been a downside when I do it. Like, and even during it, it might be stressful but it's the anticipation of the stress, I think, that is the weird thing that really fucks with you. And then you go yeah. and do it, and you're like, man, that was fucking awesome. It's actually awesome. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. dude, every single time. And, and the, like, our trip to Texas was a great example. Like, I yeah. mentioned, we went to meet with Oompa, and like, the stress was crazy leading up to it. And obviously, like, you know, you're getting to meet someone in person for the first time. It's always like a little, sure. Like, I, I don't want to seem like an idiot or like I'm trying to, you know, do this all for the <laughs> right. business. Like, yeah. I actually want to learn from you, dude. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, once you get into it and after it's over, you're like, man, that was like such a great experience. And that's all in my experience, anxiety is like, even when it comes to, I hadn't worked out for a long time. Yep. Um, I, I hadn't actually got into working out uh, until my thirties, but like okay. all of that was anxiety based. Everything like that's been, you know, that I've had to improve on in my life has been based around me having anxiety about doing it. And then once you actually get into the and function of it, conquering like, oh, that basically yeah, and doing it anyways. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <clears throat> so I had, I had, uh, you know, I've noticed, I saw a picture on your timeline recently, and just from the amount of time I've been following you, um, saw a recent update, a progress pic from a short video clip from years ago. Yeah. I'm spitballing here. Yeah, I could be way off because I don't know how tall you are. We're talking like 40 pounds, 50 pounds. What are we talking I think we're at 65. 65 I put on a little pounds. Bit. Okay. Yeah. 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 It's quite Damn. a, quite a bit. That's a Big journey. Swing. Yeah. It's yeah. quite a journey, man. Yeah. yeah. It's nuts. That's uh, sure. first of all, fantastic progress. Congratulations. That's not, easy. that's not easy to do. I've, I've in my life have gone up and down several times. I'm in a really good place right now. I've talked about it a lot on the channel with my wife and on this podcast. Um, and I'm curious cause I feel like we align in the same way and it all kind of ties together. You know, the anxiety piece we just talked about, mm -hmm. uh, running a business, um, being willing to do things for me, all of that is built on a foundation of how I'm treating myself physically and how I'm taking care of myself. Yep. And what's that been like for you? You know, and, and it's, it, it's not to say like you can, there's a lot of people that are successful and make a lot of money and are absolute mm -hmm. degenerate slobs in, our, in yep. one way or another. They don't take care of themselves. But I always think that no amount of money can buy that, the, the peace and contentment that comes with like, hey, I'm actually making an effort to take care of myself. It's amazing. So how's that? What's that been like for you in your journey? Just losing some weight, being in a place where you obviously look and feel healthier, but how has that trickled down into your business and your family life yeah. and stuff? No, it's it's been huge. You know, growing up, I was always kind of the bigger kid. Yes, yeah, for sure. Like I was, I was a big kid growing up. Um, 260 in seventh grade right here, boy. Damn, dude, you're a big the, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> the fucking grimace. Paint me purple, Damn. bro. I could have been a McDonald's mascot. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Well, I was Hamburglin for sure. Um, yeah, that was yeah. kind of my vibe. Yeah, I was a big, big kid yeah. growing up. Um, that was kind of uh, just all up until like really, I've kind of yo-yoed my entire life, just Same. up and down. Yep. And then I got into, you know, my 30s and was like, I, I really need to take this serious. I got, I got two girls. I want to be there for a long time for them. And not yes. only that, I just want to be a good example, right? Sure. Um, you know, growing up as a kid, like help wasn't a massive focus. 
at our house. I got mm. a blue collar family. It was, Same. you get your workouts on the Saturdays when you're mowing the lawn. That's how you work <laughs> out. What's a gym? Chores you know, like, equal the workout. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's like, no one knew what a gym was. It's yeah. something we just didn't do. So yeah. Um, definitely like growing up, there was a lot of that, um, weird stuff around food and, you know, overindulgence that kind of carried over into adulthood. And I just recently, like literally over the past two, three years started to figure it out. And it feels like I unlocked something that I didn't know existed. Like I was already a smart kid. Mm -hmm. I got into a lot of trouble growing up and stuff, but I was always very, very smart. But as you get older, if you don't have that health aspect to tie to it, it's impossible to maintain momentum, right? Like it's Agreed. impossible to like be a smart dude and a fat slob and, you know, continue this progression. You just get stuck or you run out of energy, you know, you run out of time. It's like, dude, my back hurts now. It, it got to, to become a problem. And so when I started to confront anxiety by going to the gym and actually, you know, taking it serious and it took a lot to walk into a gym mm. And, see for, a bunch and this of people. is for someone who's never really done it in your life. Never right? really done it. Which is crazy. Never. Kudos to yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. You walk in and you see a bunch of people like, dude, it's just overwhelming. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. Uh, so to do that, that was a, that was a massive shift. And I was able to, to really kind of confront that, overcome it. And um, it's helped the business like immeasurably. If you look at two years ago, no one gave a shit about us. Mm hmm. Like just, I mean, just being uh, truthful there. Like, Interesting you know. timing, how things start to pick up kind of, uh, you know, rising tide lifts all ships, as they say. It's weird how that works. It's crazy, right? Just saying. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's helped like everything, like family. I, I wish I could, you know, people that are that are um, kind of struggling with that right now. Sure. It's weird being so close. I'm just a couple years out from yep. the whole transformation. And so it's very recent memory. And I can remember how I felt like versus now mm -hmm. and it's a massive shift it's like an entirely different person you can ask anyone that works here like yep. it's just it helps a lot yeah and i think that's i think that's important to note is that when you're you're when you're in inning one top of the inning one it feel like it's so like you and you're at the bottom of the mountain you're like man this fucking how is this ever gonna happen like this feels impossible what am i doing i don't know what's happening and i've always you know one of my kind of tenants that I live by is like just a, a single decision made every single day to push you in a single direction compounded over time leads to extraordinary results, right? So it might feel immeasurable when you're at the bottom of the mountain, but just focus on that particular day. Don't think about the future and wake up the next day and focus on that day and do that same thing. After 365 days, man, life's going to start looking a lot different. And mm -hmm. then after two years and the next thing you know, as we all know, once it's not in your head, time fucking goes by like this. We're all, you know, wishing the years away. And all of a sudden it's like, wow, three years went by and three years of daily decisions to make your life better. It's, it's unbelievable. And that's with fitness. That's with whatever it is, business, like reading something in, that might inspire you to, to try something new. That's something I'm, I'm, I'm very passionate about. And I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. And I have a lot of, I have a lot of respect for you. And, and, and my wife did something similar where she's had an unbelievable transformation over the last three or four years since 2020. And she was in the same boat. She had never dabbled in f fitness in her life. She'd never always intimidated, anxious by the gym. And just one day was like, man, I feel terrible and fucking got up and decided to do it. And same thing, just made that decision every day and boom. And mm -hmm. now she's in love with it. Fitness nut. I come from a different background. I was a football guy. I was kind of, I power lifted in high school. So I have a, a background of big and strong dude, but was always super heavy. And that can only take you so far. And once you start getting older, you, like you said, it's like, man, I'm, you're waking up in the morning like, God damn, bro, I'm 36 and I feel like I'm 600 right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah dude, and, for sure. Yeah, and it's incredible what can happen with uh, a little bit of work. So I thank you for sharing that. I know yeah. that you mentioned the, the thing with food in your family. For me, one of the biggest... <sighs> One of the biggest struggles, this is kind of a family thing, and I know a lot of families are like this, where food equals comfort, right? Yeah. So there's the necessity of food and the utility of food, and then there's the emotional comfort of food. And I think for a lot of people that struggle with it, that is the piece that is the hardest to break because you know like you know, what you need to do, we need to have this, do that, but it is such a homeostate, it's such a place mm -hmm. of comfort for some people to, to disconnect from that can be really difficult, but... Yeah. yeah, everyone's everyone's it's like a reward system too. It like is. I feel like yeah. like with food, yeah. it's um it's well, I, I did 
Yeah. Yeah. Like I did this thing. So therefore I get this and like rewiring that after 20, 30, sometimes four, like, you know, people don't change for 50, a while. 60 years yeah. could 50, be 60, yeah. yeah. Like it takes, it takes forever to, to kind of rewire that in your brain. It yeah. takes a long ass time, man. Dude, it's my crazy. folks are in their seventies, early seventies and they same thing. Yo-yoed their whole life. were always pretty heavy. Kind of tried to hop on like what was trendy at the time. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until they were like 65, 66, they figured it out. And now, yeah. and, and they're like, healthier than ever they're walking all day they're like spry energetic took them till they were 65 and i was yeah, that was so inspir inspirational for me just watching that was these people i love so dearly being like man it's never too late to just wake up and be like fuck it i'm gonna do some i'm gonna do some hard shit today and try Dude, to make really my life not. a little better <laughs> it's never too late man yeah. it's never too late never too late oh man so i want to talk to you a little bit about meta pcs sure um you know, like you said, out of your own mouth, two years ago, no one, two years ago, no one gave a shit about us, right? Mm -hmm. And that's, I love that because, like you said, you like to build things, and that can be with your hands making computers, or that can be building a brand via online content or whatever. And clearly, it's working. You guys, you know, I I don't know the particular numbers, but I see you out there. You're capturing some market share. You've partnered with some really cool people online. I believe. Do you have a marketing background? I or, do. Yeah. 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 It, yeah. It, my background is in, um, I actually started in radio Okay. Um, back when I was a teenager. That was like what I wanted to do. So I did internships at radio stations, got yeah. on air and started doing marketing, um, in like the digital side. So like selling ad campaigns to freaking car dealerships and stuff, like, sure. stuff like that. But you learn actually at a radio station, there's so many components that are similar to running a business. You've got like the display, the ads, the creative side, the sales side, the like business side. So it was, it was like a really good area for me to learn how to craft a business and a message to, um, on the marketing side of things. So that's really where I started and then kind of grew into this. Uh, I had always done PCs my entire life. Like yeah. I'd always built PCs. Um, and so it was like kind of a natural progression into, yep. into that. Doing, I mean, building a business out of doing what you love. You hate to see it. <laughs> You hate, hate to see to it, see, hate but to there's, see it. you know, there's like, you know, there's some, there's some bumps along the way. Of like, course. like Meta started four or five years ago, but Got prior it. to that, I had worked for another PC building company that I had like helped to create. So, yes. you know, yes. this was a, you know, this is like a, this was born from a lot of, <laughs> a lot of trials Experience, and tribulations. Kind of maybe already doing it already for somebody else and then being like, Hey, I can, I can take this experience and do my own thing. Yeah. And, 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 uh, that's fantastic. And that, what are, are we allowed, are we allowed to say what company it was? I'm just curious. So, sure. Yeah. And, and I, it's Zydex. Oh, Zydex. Uh, was, okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so I'm familiar with them. So you were part of Zydex's come up essentially early on. Yeah. So Zydex started, um, uh, essentially I was hired by a guy who ran, uh, a handful of local computer stores in Utah. Yes. I was living in Utah at the time. Okay. And he said, I want to start this online PC brand. I don't know how to do it. You're the marketing dude. Help me build this thing. So, came on, built it. Um, it was something I didn't have any ownership in. Sure. So, yeah, it was something that I had the, a lot the, of the W two guy, the W two guy. Yeah, yeah. Which but is fine. Yeah. Put a lot of effort into it and building it, and then you know things we kind of went our separate ways, and you know I said, and I brought a couple guys with me that had helped to build that company that yep. you know I was good friends with, and so it ended up working out for the better. I I wish them the best. They're awesome people and stuff, but yep. uh, you know it's it's cool to be able to build your own thing that you actually have ownership in that you can like pass down to your kids and shit. You know, hundred percent, man. I mean, there is. I don't know, you, you know, every, every on you go on any entrepreneurial podcast or read any book by somebody that's like, you know, uh, how, how to think and grow rich, all these ones. It's like, there's a couple ways to do it. And where the main way is just owning equity in a business essentially, or creating mm -hmm. something that people appreciate and people like, and, and you've clearly done that. So I, I've enjoyed seeing your, your marketing chops. You know, I see the shorts you guys do. I see the Twitter posts, that one you did recently where you took that, that viral clip with a woman's flab in the water. And again, yeah, we get a little crazy. Yeah, dude. Sometimes. That's how you do it though. I mean, that's, that's how you sell shit, man. You just got to not be stiff, especially yeah. in this day and age, like classic advertising. I mean, that, that, that shit moves so fast now. It's like, you gotta be 
That's hey. the toughest thing for a lot of brands, I feel like. And mm. Liquid Death, I know Liquid Death, like now they've got so big that they get shit on, but Certainly. they are great at that they execution. They crushed it, yeah. They cr they crush it, at, yeah. and they like were selling ads for the Super Bowl spots on their on their cases and stuff. Like yeah. just everything they do execution wise is great, and I think a lot of that is it skips the corporate side of marketing, right? Because the second you have to run it by seven people, the meme's over. It's dead. So it's dead. like, yeah. what are we doing? You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you can you can be more nimble if you're a smaller a smaller brand or smaller company. You have more opportunities to like jump on shit and be like, let's just film it today. Let's do it and get it out and post it. Yeah. You know. There's that other piece too. It's funny, like it is so, it's very uh, commensurate upon how big the company and brand is with how it becomes received. Like you see like the Wendy's Twitter account and like all the, when all these brands are like, oh, this shit works. It's like, it becomes a game of like, how can we like stir controversy or do something crazy so people retweet because like the Wendy's Twitter account said something, you know, uh, they clapped back on the color, yeah, like the yeah. clap back. And some of the shit was funny, and then you saw all the other brands try to start doing it. So there's like this delicate balance of doing it effectively or being too cringe. But then at the same time, it's like even if you are cringe and people are retweeting it, you're still raising brand awareness. So it's kind of a how a do win -win. you lose? Yeah, <laughs> is there a <laughs> way? To, the only way to lose is to just try to do it like it was done 30 years ago and exactly be very yeah. slow. And then and no one sees it. Yeah, like, no, oh, nobody yeah. cares. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, what um I'm curious about just you said you've been doing this your whole life building PCs. Mm -hmm. What was the catalyst for that? Was this like a like a um dad mom type of thing grew up in a house that was very tech savvy or did this something you came into on your own? I really came into it on my own. Like I had started kind of experimenting with like building PCs. My dad had bought like a super old one for us to use as a family computer. And yeah. I started to upgrade some of the components and my dad, super blue collar dude, like his job was fixing welding torches and regulators and stuff like very so hands on. He guy. wasn't the nerd in the family then. <laughs> Not the nerd, but he was like the hands on dude. So, yes. um, so when he found out had, I was into yeah. like, tearing shit apart and putting it back together. He's like, okay, maybe this is the way I can connect with this kid. Love and it. So we'd go to like thrift stores and I'd buy computers, rip the parts out, upgrade other ones and then sell them on eBay. So I, I was flipping like as a sixth, seventh grader Damn, and he man. really encouraged that. That's so crazy. Anytime I talk to someone who's like, as an adult now in this position, we, oh, I run a few businesses. It's like, you always hear, oh, I was in seventh grade. I was fucking flipping shit and selling it on eBay, like the Gary Vaynerchuk model. You know what I mean? For it's real. just like, and that, that you think that's just hardwired in, in some people's DNA. Like, it's just, you're kind of born with this propensity for, uh, you know, look so, problem solving and just kind of not trying to follow the traditional route that is typically parroted by society of, you know, school, college, job type of thing. You're already, I mean, you're in middle school and you're out here. Was that like mm -hmm. just out of a love for the game where you're like, I really want to make money so I can buy cool computer games? Like maybe a little bit of both? A little bit of both. Yeah. Like, obviously, like you see this, like, you want to get cool shit, obviously, yeah, as a course. kid. Yeah. But at the same time, I do think it is, it comes down to like, if you have a natural inclination to solve problems, yeah, I think that kind of lends itself to someone who's going to end up trying to build a build something, whether yeah. it's like a, a product or a brand. I think that just comes down to like how well you interact with other people. Uh, you know, yeah. I, I know a bunch of entrepreneurs that just build a product that's solid, like a solid product, but they're not people, people at all. Yeah, <laughs> like they, they can't need a manage good team, a team around them that can. Yeah, but I, I feel like if you have that inclination to solve a problem on on one end or another, you're going to end up probably pretty young. Yep. exhibiting some of those traits, you know, I, yep. I feel like at least. No, I would agree. I'm curious. Uh, I imagine we're close to this. I'm just generally guessing. Are you in your 30s or? Yeah, 34. 34, yep. yeah. So I'm four yep. years older than you. It makes sense. So we grew up similar time period, the Halo years, the early PC. So I yeah. was... Many people don't know this about me. I was a bit of a PC nerd myself. I was building PCs when I was 10 or 11. I was making my own web pages via yeah. uh, HTML. Uh, Angel Fire, a GeoCities. A Angel Fire. Yeah. So I was, do you remember the Microsoft Internet Gaming Zone by any chance? I don't. Uh -oh. It was, that was, it was an early web interface to play multiplayer games. Uh, the, the main, like they had a lot of shit like card games, hearts and solitaire, but a couple of big names came on the original rainbow six oh, nice. and Jedi Knight two. 
this was, I want to say around 96, 90, or about 98 era, something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I was like creating custom map packs for Rainbow Six. And I was like, you know, coding notepad fucking files mm -hmm. to like move shit around the map and stuff. Oh, yeah. So I was, I was the same way, hugely into that side of things. And I guess, you know, I've went through different phases where I've fallen out of that a little bit, but I've always been very interested in tech production and that's kind of informed how things have gone uh, in my life and where I'm at now. I mean, sometimes I'm I'm more excited about setting up the cameras and like getting the lighting and how things are going to look than I am about the actual thing because I just have that fucking that excitement in me that loves all this, all the gear and what it can do and what you can do with it. Um, I, I think I've seen it, your setups, dude. It's nuts. So are you? Using, <laughs> I have to know just real quick. Yeah, sure. the, are you using Black Magic cameras? These are actually Sony's. Yeah. So okay. It, yeah. So I actually I use in this particular set, I have an eight a black a black magic Atom switcher that I yeah. that I hook the Sony's up to. But uh yeah, I've been in the Sony Eco for probably two to three years now. Started nice. with the A7S3 and then I have a, a pair of uh, A7s fours and then I have an FX thirty as a wide cam. Typically so for you're this, serious just, about this, man. Holy hey, shit. man. Yeah, I like, <laughs> dude, I love it. I love it. And it's overkill. Like you have to find the balance too, because like the quickest way on YouTube and in content creation in general is caring too much about the production because 99% of people, production is unremarkable. They just want something that's impactful, emotion, it elicits mm -hmm. some sort of emotion. It's why people can just run around with their cell phone and, and get followers of, you know, millions of people, followings of millions of people. But depending on what you're doing, there can be an element of production that really heightens the experience for people. I do think some people worry too much about the production and not enough about the content. And it's like, you're just polishing a turret at that point. That's sure, definitely sure. a problem area on YouTube. I see for some people, but like, for instance, I, are you familiar with uh, Chris Williamson? He does the modern wisdom podcast. No, I'm not. So he's a, he's one of the bigger podcasters in the space. I'd put him in kind of like the, he's, he has people like Jordan Peterson, David Goggins, all of the big podcast mm -hmm. circle guys on. And he recently, He's always going crazy on the production side. He's got like a, a 4K cinema team and he's always making tweets about like how he's upping it to the next level. And he just, he went to a studio in, uh, I think it was in Texas recently and just shot like a five camera sit down podcast on this like huge screen that they used to film like Hollywood blockbuster movies. And everyone's like, dude, you're you're a fucking podcast host. Like, what are you doing? This is the dumbest shit. What's going on here, yeah. man? But they look so cool. And I just I have such an appreciation for his his curiosity and desire to just do it at that level, even though yeah. what he's delivering is just a conversation between two people. So there's that funny juxtaposition of like, hey, the same production crew that made fucking Avatar is making a Chris Williamson <laughs> podcast. It's like, it makes no sense, but it's, it's fun to watch. So yeah, that, that all just, I, for me, it goes back. It, it just all boils down to like curiosity. I'm just, I'm so yeah. curious about how things work, like wanting to learn new things. And that's really just been, you know, the North star for me in my career as someone who started on YouTube as a musician, uploading, you know, covers of fucking, the Jonas Brothers songs in 2008 oh, yeah. and then to hear sitting on this couch doing what I do now. But yeah, dude, it's curiosity, man. It's like figuring <laughs> new shit out. It's, that's the biggest part of the game. It is. I think, <laughs> I think that it's so important to, to stay curious and try and find new things. And I think there's this tough balance that we have. And I'm sure, you know, I know I struggle with it and I'm sure you do too, is where, where it's so easy to just be, be preoccupied at all times because mm -hmm. everywhere we look, whether it's our phones in our pockets or it's the TVs or we're sitting in front of a computer, like our attention is valuable, obviously, and there's attention economy now, and it's being vied for everywhere we look. People want our attention to monetize it. And so the, this idea of just like being bored or like learning something new like it has to be very intentional now like yeah. when when we were kids it was like oh i'm fucking bored there's nothing to do why don't i learn how to skateboard or why don't i learn this new thing and as an adult and i think now as a kid in this in this age this kind of digital age like it it really needs intention because if you're not making this, the decision that, hey, I'm going to do this and learn this or try this new mm -hmm. thing, you're just going to be, you're every single day you're going to wake up and be fucking 
pulled along by your coat. You know what I'm saying? You're just going to have the fish hook 100%. in your fucking cheek and being yanked around really? by all your devices. So that's something I harp on all the time. That I think well, they have so devices old. for it now too. Like <laughs> there's a there's a device that I have called Brick. Like okay. I, this oh, this is I a thing. I, I literally bought this <laughs> stupid thing. <laughs> it's it's this square device, and you hold your phone up to it, and it will brick your phone in terms of like it will <clears throat> disable any apps other than the ones you've selected. Okay. So it's if it's like phone or messenger or something like you can you can pick the apps or none at all. You hold it up to it, it bricks your phone, and until you come back and hold it up to that device. It will leave your phone bricks. If you try to open Twitter, it says, hey, man, you can't use this app. Yeah. It's a distraction, right? I fucking so this, this love bri- this. And I it's such love a, it. It's such a dumb thing, but it, it, it actually helps me a ton because I have one at the office and I have one at home. So I get <laughs> home and I'll use this brick and I'll be like, this is brick of the phone. And I'm going to hang out with the kids. I need that, though, because I'm just like crazy. I'll check my notifications all the time. Yeah, I yeah. need a thing to turn my shit off. Um, in order to be intentional, like you're saying, like mm-hmm. I'm like I want to learn something. I have to now disable my phone mm-hmm. in order for me to pay attention. But it's a reality, you know. It, like I think a lot of people can benefit from whether it's that or just like turning the shit off. Because if you want to learn something, chances are you're going to use your phone or your PC or your computer to do it, right? Yes. And within that, you have access to all of those distractions. That's right. So some sort of <laughs> you know, mitigation of that is necessary for guys like me that are just massive ADHD, just can't like focus very well. You know, I I love that. And I'm glad I asked that question because you, you're clearly very self-aware and very cognizant of how it affects your productivity in your life to the point where you bought a fucking brick that you have to hold up to your phone to neutralize it so you can get shit done, which is perfect because I've been the same way the last couple years. I've experimented. They have obviously apps where you can do the same thing, where you can like give yourself windows of time where you can't use apps. But like to me, I've, and I've fucked around with those. It's always like, you can just kind of like go to the master and be like, disable turn the it. shit off. Yeah, turn. yeah, get weird with it. So yeah. this idea that your physical, there's a physical piece to it that you can, that you can brick and leave behind and go somewhere else. That I love, and and genuinely, I'm I'm gonna look into that after this podcast because that sounds like something I could, I could probably, check it out. Yeah, and I, it was made by college kids too. This is the craziest part, and I think this is gonna become more prevalent. Mm-hmm. Is the younger. The younger gen- I hate even saying this, but like younger <laughs> generation. Baby, it's all good. Yeah. Ah, damn it. Uh, <laughs> these kids made it. These They were like, yeah, we're college kids. We were using our phones too much. So we in- we made this product called Brick. And, right. and I think that's going to be more and more of a, like a commonplace thing where kids are like, you know what? Maybe there's more to- than just the phone. You know? uh, like- I, I, I would totally agree. I think that, you know, the, the transition we've seen over the last several decades, like I said before, like when we were kids, it's like you're bored, you're looking for things to do. Now we live in an age where you, it, like, it's the opposite. You're, no, well, mm-hmm. I, I, I can't speak for kids because I'm sure kids still probably feel like they probably feel bored, but they're constantly being stimulated at the same stimulated, time. Yeah. But I think more than ever, it is a super, pa- like, <clears throat> time, and this is actually the point I'm trying to make. Time is a scarce resource. We all have the same amount of it, but focus is the true superpower. Like it's mm-hmm. not, you don't, it's not that you don't have enough time. It's that you don't know how to manage that time and focus on the things that need, that need, that need tending to. Yep. And so, you know, there's, there's a million ways. I know there's like productivity podcasts and all this shit. And I mean, it's a huge niche now to, to talk about like all the apps people. And that's the thing that fucks me up. It's like, everything is like comes down to an app and it's like, well that, then I'm picking up my phone and I have three fucking Twitter notifications and I forgot why I fucking picked it up. I'm 35 minutes down a fucking X rabbit hole about how the eclipse is the second coming of Jesus Christ. <laughs> and, uh, and like, I, then I scroll down, I see someone get fucking murdered and then Elon's crying about something and an hour's gone by and I forgot why I picked up the fucking phone. So I put it down <laughs> and then I go back to the computer and I'm like, Oh fuck. I actually meant to use that productivity app and here we are two hours later and I've got nothing done. <laughs> Happens every time. <laughs> every fucking, <laughs> fucking time. Nailed, dude. dude, a lot of it's intention though, right? Yes. And and I think more than that, it's like habit. Like if you can yeah. create these habits, like you mentioned, like you start doing something every day for 30 days, 45 days, it becomes a habit. Yeah. Whether that's like reading, you know, <clears throat> working on something, learning something, it's carving out that time and making it intentional, I think is yeah. most of, like more than any app, that's going to probably help more than anything you know 
hundred percent. And I, yeah, I hate, it's kind of cringe making this comparison, but I, I like to make the, this conversation we just had kind of parlaying it back to taking care of your body by working out, feeding it good things. Your brain is no different. Like your brain needs nourishment. It needs you to feed it good things. And that takes intention because if we don't pay attention, we just get bombarded by dog shit all day long. And I can sit kind of like this slow, the social media feeds, the slow drip of content. We're constantly refreshing to get those little hits. That to me is kind of like just, you know, like sugar. And you eventually your brain gets the fucking diabetes and it fucking, <laughs> and you need to do something real bad to reverse course. But it's, uh, Dude, it's just 100%. different because there's no out, you don't have like the outward facing side effects like you do with diet nutrition where it's like, okay, this person needs to reel it in where your brain, mm -hmm. nobody, nobody knows. You're just, we're all just dopamine depleted fucking zombies walking around trying to get through every day with like this baseline level of dopamine in the fucking ground, wondering why we exist, <clears throat> but nobody else knows why. Like, so you have to, you really now have to be. You just have to, you have to deal with it. As an adult, you get to a point where like, listen, you got to be self-aware, mm -hmm. whatever I'm doing, whatever it is, everyone has their own vices. If it's negatively impacting me, like I know it is, let's make a change. Let's, let's do something every single day with intention, try to create a new habit, turn things around and go in a better direction. And I think, 100%. and I think that's the difference between people that end up being high performing individuals and people that kind of just coast through life and don't really know what's going on, end up complaining. They like to point fingers. They like to blame mm -hmm. it on everything else, but you're the one steering the rudder, baby. You got to take yeah. control at some point. It's a, it's that awareness and you can develop it at any time. hundred like, percent. Absolutely. Yeah. Most people, I feel like develop it when it's close to rock bottom or they're, they, they have to make a change when Agree. they're like, dude, <clears throat> I'm out of options. Like yep. I have no idea what to do next. I need to, to do something and then they start looking for help i feel like most people that's when they get to the point where they're like okay i'm ready to to change and then some people it, it never comes right they just continue down the road and make excuses and things but i yep. think it's not irredeemable ever like, i no. think you can come back you know certainly at any point. certainly and there's all there's different levels i love story like i love looking at people like theo vaughn or like the stevos who now have these thriving businesses and kind of overcame these addictions and you know, recalibrated their lives and their habits and now have these, you know, incredible businesses and these lives that so many people are envious of. Mm -hmm. And then, but they still have their demons and their issues and their fucking, and their self doubts and all these, and all these different issues. And it becomes, you know, it's, I, I love watching guys like that because it's relatable in a lot of ways. Yeah, it's, it's something to, it's way more relatable than somebody that came up and had no adversity, which doesn't exist, by the way. <laughs> yeah, like, no, if they say no, that, it's for, they're, they're fucking lying. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, like, that, just to know that that exists, it gives people something to to look to and be like, okay, I mean, maybe I can change my life when I'm 30, 40, 50 years old and yeah. turn this shit around, you know? It's totally possible. Always. Let's, uh, yeah. I want to ask you, we talked a little about men of PCs. I, you can, you can tell I'm clear, I'm like... I might as well just call this a fucking productivity podcast at this point. I just, I love talking to other people. Right. I love talking to other people who are, you know, they have skin in the game like you do. And, you know, you deal with your anxiety, you're building crazy things, you're building relationships and just getting some insight on, on, you know, what, what you lean on to, to get through each day to try to get better and deal with the issues that a lot of us deal with. So I appreciate you sharing some of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, for as far as meta PCs goes over the next couple of years, I know you guys have grown a lot in the last two. What are you thinking in like the three, three to five years? What's your vision for the company? I think the big vision for meta PCs, and this kind of goes back to who some of my mentors are. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, one of my, one of my biggest mentors, his name is Al Alex, and he started a brand called Alienware that, um, that ended up dude, selling to Dell. Of course, yeah. I remember doing um, every kid in my middle school wanted an Alienware PC. Same, dude. That's how, <laughs> why I started the whole thing. Yeah, is like that I I wanted. I could never afford one, but no, I'd see it so in the magazines. But they look so badass. It's awesome. And you know, there's like I know there's kids out there that think the same thing about Meta, and so like we have kids come through the the shop and stuff all the time. But sure. anyway, Al is like a a big uh, inspiration for me, a mentor because he took oh. a brand, he built it solid made a great product. People loved it. And he, you know, ended up selling it to Dell, which yep. is, which is great. But that aside, I don't know if the goal is to actually sell meta PCs, yeah. but the goal would definitely be to 
to take the place of a brand like Alienware, where it can be a product that is somewhat mass produced, but still has that individuality and, and maintains the marketing cadence that we're known for yep. uh, without, I never want to lose that, you know, through like a layer of people. I, I think that would be like the ultimate humiliation is mm-hmm. like if it got dumbed down <clears throat> and I don't know how you avoid that, but I'm going to try to figure it out. <laughs> it, it's the, it's the, it's the ever present problem of scaling. Like there is just yeah. this eventual, like you get to a ceiling where in order to scale this more, bring in more people and it, there's ways around it, but yeah, I mean, it, and and it's not, sometimes it's not always about the product being worse. It's just people's perception. They're like, it's like the indie, like, oh, I knew about this band before they were popular, right? And now yeah, they're same. popular, so I don't like them anymore. Like, it's a mm-hmm. weird human condition thing that plays into it a little bit, but. It is for sure. So we're like, we're looking at that because it, it the company is, I mean, it is growing substantially like yeah. you know we're, we're moving quite a few units we're, we're doing really well as a company we've been fortunate and we work hard to do yeah, that like absolutely. it's not magic you know we have a lot of people here working hard um but i think the goal at the end of the day is we want to grow this thing into a brand that can affect as many people as possible my big gauge of like success is if i know that there are a bunch of homes that have meta pcs in them that are working great and people love it and it's positively affecting people's lives i'm super stoked on that yeah. It's like to boil it down, that really is. I love seeing like customer reviews and shit. Yep. That really uh really makes me stoked. I like that a lot. So that, that's a good that's a good North Star to have, man. I mean, you can't ask for much more than kind of creating something, having people use it, appreciate it, love it. Yeah. And you're kind of at the the head of the ship steering that. That's that's pretty awesome. Quick question about and so you're like a PC guy. Yeah. Mac versus PC Master Race. I don't and I don't want to get you in any trouble here, but do you own any Mac products? Uh, my wife has a MacBook Pro. Oh, so you allow one in the house? <laughs> you get one. You get one in the shut house, <laughs> and she's had it for a while. Okay, and I didn't know she bought it. Yeah, <laughs> no, she's she's been like a lifeline. She bought a Mac behind your back, bro. Now listen, that's check a, this that's out. That's a therapy conversation right there. I don't want to. And it has that. been. I don't want to air that on this podcast. That's too much for me. <laughs> Jesus. No, listen. So she's like a lifelong Mac user, right? Okay. So we have one MacBook Pro in the house. And it hasn't been until this past year that she's been like, maybe I'll be a, a we got her a desktop and she's been using that. She's never been a gamer, never okay. been into gaming, starting to get into it, like yep. very light. I'm talking like easy Overwatch. We're running through like tutorials and stuff. Yep. We're converting. We're converting Mrs. Meta. She's gonna, you're gonna bring her into the PC master race. I'm sure trying, man. All right, I'm trying. All right. that's the ultimate sell. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. It. So I, I. It's interesting. So I told you the story, but when I grew up, I was PC guy, tinkering with parts, and loved building stuff. Always was a PC guy. Then I got into college. I kind of fell out of gaming a little bit. More athletics. And wasn't doing much with computers in general. And when I came back to it years later. I don't remember. Uh, I had always had, I had like an old Dell. I had like a Dell mm-hmm. gaming computer that I gamed on. I played years of World of Warcraft, of course, but it wasn't until post college, I was in a band and eventually left the band and was going to start doing stuff online. I was like, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to re, I'm going to take the effort I was putting into the band and try to make content on the internet because I know that's where everybody's attention is. And that, at that point, I was with my now wife. I tell this story a lot on my main channel. I love it. And mm-hmm. I didn't have two, pennies to rub together and i was like honey i don't know how i convinced her and i probably i was probably a stupid idea at the time but i convinced her to let me use her credit card to buy an imac because at the time like it was you know just from what i had seen i'd been out of the game for a while and it was just like oh the creative like for the producers and like making music and it's like all this stuff it's like the mac ecosystem is very friendly it's user friendly you don't have to worry about all the belt you know customizing or being super knowledgeable so that was my initial soiree into the mac ecosystem and then i it kind of just rode with me all these years or at least the first couple years i was doing it 2018 comes around i'm like you know what I haven't gamed in years. I'm itching to play some games with the boys. And I had a little bit of YouTube money coming in at that point, bought a PC. I was like, man, I forgot what I was. I fucking love this. I forgot what I was missing. So now I kind of have the two ecosystems in parallel. I have the office where I am right now is mostly Mac based. And then in my house, I have a dedicated gaming room, that's just Mm -hmm. all just, 
the PC. That's and, how uh, a lot of our customers are too, yeah. though, man. Like, like I think a lot of people expect us to be like, man, you guys must be super heavy against Mac. But if you look at a lot of our customers, they do sometimes have like a, a MacBook Pro or something. Yeah. But when it comes to gaming, you're just never going to get the same experience. No. It's your PC. It's just it's impossible. And I think most people recognize that. So if you're like, if you're someone who really wants to get into serious gaming, you want to experience performance, PC is is always going to be the answer, hands down. 100%. Like it just is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I have like, no, I'm not like, man, screw Max or whatever. They they definitely the, the thing is like this software and stuff pretty solid it works yeah right i get why people use it i get it that's you know? right um, and, and i think I that's it. why for consume it's so consumer friendly for like you know that you know the the 65 year old like looking over the top of his glasses in the mac store like oh fucking like yeah. that's great man like get the iphone get the get the macbook like those things are probably easier to use but for people that understand what's going on under the hood there's just nothing sweeter than having like a, a nice pc yeah. build knowing how to use it knowing how to customize 100 blah, blah, blah. And, and we're like we're not afraid of those conversations either like sure. we try to bridge a lot of a lot of that um i feel like in this industry specifically pc builders they kind of hesitate from approaching topics like mac or console yeah but we're willing to go there like this is a water-cooled playstation I was. Like, right I, I wanted to ask you. <laughs> right behind you, in frame, there is a water cooled yeah. PlayStation. That's a PlayStation. So, like, we're willing to play with other platforms and be like, "Can we just try to make it cool?" You know, like, because <laughs> can we make a PlayStation? Like, look at this. This it is looks a, bad. This is way cooler. Wait, so cool. now it's three thousand dollars. It's not five hundred. Yeah. So, did you take the internal parts out and put it in a new case? Basically, is that or is there is we the did. PlayStation case actually in there? No, the the actual stock case is Gonzo. Gonzo, so we ripped everything apart, took it all apart, water cooled completely, cleaned all of the thermal paste off of it, liquid cooled it. We've still got to run some fluid through this, yeah. but put it in an entirely new enclosure. Like this is, uh, you wouldn't even know it's a PlayStation. You would think it's a PC just based on, on it's how just it the looks. way it looks. Yeah. And as but it's I, completely water cooled too. And people ask, they're like, what, what performance do I get out of that? And the answer is, not it, it just it literally just looks cool so it's like you don't really get anything badass out of it other than you know a really cool show piece which a lot of people like that it's it's, awesome. it, it's there's something to be said about things that are remarkable right that's mm -hmm. the whole point and that who who has a you know water-cooled playstation 5 nobody am i gonna get more frames absolutely not <laughs> you're hard capped at fucking 90 or whatever the you fuck the ps5 yeah. gets <laughs> but boy is gonna look cool and you it's can gonna look cool yeah and your friends are gonna think you're badass and that's a lot of what we dabble in, too, is like even on the PC side, when we water cool a PC, yes, you will get more performance out of it because you can overclock it and it'll run a little bit cooler because you're running water through it. But a lot of it is just looks like we want to make something that looks cool just to make something that looks cool. You yeah. Know? Like it's like an art piece. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess that makes sense. And that's that's true. I imagine for a lot of your custom builds that are not PS5s that are just custom PCs. Mm -hmm. I've seen some of the man some of the some of the pc builds i've seen over the last couple of years and it's funny because the the content game kind of lends itself to making extreme builds like how you know how it's just to for the for the reason of it being remarkable and trying to get more exposure online but some of the builds my buddy cody donut operator he's gotten some crazy yeah. builds from people i'm very i'm i'm a huge fan of the like the desk builds where it's like it's a just a desk and there's a PC inside yeah. of it. Yeah, know. that shit's awesome. That shit's fucking wild. You wouldn't like there's a few videos on YouTube where I'm so envious of guys that have the the tools, A, and the skill set to do it. But usually they just fire on a YouTube they just fire on a camera and they're like, Oh, I'm just gonna uh doing this custom uh this custom PC build in my desk and then it's a twenty minute video. I'm sitting there like, that's fucking sick. What is this? Yeah, what is yeah. this and how can I What's do that? Going on? Yeah. yeah. We've got I, a couple guys here. Like we hire those guys. Like I, we hire those guys I to come it. work here. Yeah. You know, to build those PCs. We built like an avatar PC that was totally custom fabbed, like 30, 40 hours of work into that thing, just for the sake of saying, here's the video of us making a crazy build, you know? Yeah. There, there's a lot of lot of attention. People like people like that stuff. They like seeing it. What's like the what is the what's the hardest part for you? I mean, right, well, let me back up. Because I'm curious, do you is one of your businesses that you're involved in cabinets? Did I see that on Twitter somewhere? Yeah, I had done that for a long time. So okay. I I'd, I'd done like um well I don't know, a long time I'd done it for a few years. I'd done a cabinet company, and they were actually partners in Meta. 
um, okay. these partners in this company. And we ended up, I think it was about a year ago, we ended up um, swapping interest in companies. Okay. One thing you run into as an entrepreneur, you're like, I'm spread too thin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. too much going on. Yeah. So we ended up swapping interests so that I would own more of Meta. It was like this big um, thing. But like, I think- uh, All the paperwork stuff. <laughs> it's all the paperwork stuff. What I kind of ran into, and this was about a year ago, is my dad ended up having some health issues. Yep. And uh, wanted to, I really took a look at how I was spending my time. I Love want to that. spend more of it with my family. Love and that. so there's a lot of companies or interests that I've had over the years, whether it's cabinets or even like I had some coffee company stuff. I started to scale back on a lot of that because I wanted to uh, really focus on like my health, my family. Like I, I could create a million companies and make all the money in the world. But at the end of the day, it's like... What else do you need? Relationships, yeah. health, loving relationships. Yeah, yeah I, I'm glad you said that. I just two yeah, was it yesterday? It was two days ago. I saw this thread on Twitter, and this is the the cheesiest shit. But excuse me, um, it was one of these guys that writes threads, and they were like, "This TikToker goes around on Venice Beach or whatever, in interviews only people over the age of 65 and asks them questions about their life." And it was this tweet thread, and it was like eight different videos, and it was just this younger kid going up to older people, like, what would you tell your young, you know, these typical questions, what would you tell your younger self about life that you didn't know now? Things like that. Uh, you know, as you're getting older, like what's one of the things you thought was so important when you were a kid that you know doesn't matter anymore. And like it all, it, they all answered the same thing. It's all like the chase for money, riches, materialism, mm -hmm. none of that matters. The only thing that matters is the people in your life that you love, your the quality of your relationships, spending time with the people you love, family, all these things. And I got like, that shit makes me super emotional because, and I know you can relate because you're, you know, you go through phases in your life where it's all gas, no brakes, the blinders are on, the relationships suffer, the health suffers. Um, and cause you're building stuff and you, and, yep. and you, there is an element to being an entrepreneur, somebody who's running businesses or building things where you need a certain level of obsession, I think. Yep. But I think there's, in my life recently, there's been this recognition and appreciation for the seasonality of life where, you know, I, when I first started, you know, in my early YouTube days, even be, you know, before I was doing it, making any money in the restaurant, like th that was the hustle season. I was going hard. And when it started to pick up, like I really put my foot on the gas and, was able to leave the restaurant industry and, and, and I've done some really cool shit that I'm proud of. And then I had a son and that kept going, but I, I got to a point where I was like, I know I could go harder and mm -hmm. scale. And, you know, and that's the thing when you're, when you're an entrepreneur, there's no limit to the amount of work you can come in because the, the amount of work you can put in, because there's literally no ceiling to what you can achieve. Right. It's like, yeah. And what you get back is oftentimes in line with what you put in. But I was like, man, I, I really don't want to miss the first three, four, five, six years of my son's life. Cause you know, we were planning mm -hmm. on only having one child. We, we only have one child. That was our plan. And I'm like, these are some of the best years. And I think I would really be shooting myself looking back. So I made an intentional choice to, I, you know, I'm not going to say I, I, I still was working hard, but I was like, I made sure that I wasn't sacrificing uh, the things I needed to do and the, the time I needed to spend with the family. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was in a fortunate position where I had already spent those years building the business. So it was kind of, I could be autonomous in a way in certain things. I started to outsource some of the editing things I was very scared of doing initially, obviously giving up some creative control there. Um, but that was a real eye opener for me where it's like, you know, there, there can be a balance if you want there to be, but you have to be okay with being left in the dust by people that have no balance. Yep. And so that, that, and as I'm 38 now, my son's five and a half, I'm so grateful and happy with where I'm at. And I'm, you know, in starting this podcast and just for whatever reason in the past couple months, I feel like I'm entering a, a new season of like growth and working a little oh, yeah. bit harder than normal, building something new. You know, you're familiar with some of the content I've made, which is I've been doing mm -hmm. for years, which I love critical commentary, trying to make people laugh, stuff like that. But I, you know, 
I'm almost, I'm, I'm less than two years away from 40. I love real conversations with other people. Stuff like this really gets my wheels spinning. So yeah. I'm excited to try and to build something cool here. And it's like big deal, bro. Right. It's like everybody, every, every white male with a fucking mic has a podcast. I get <laughs> it, podcast. but like, but fucking, but, uh, but yeah, I just, so to, to, to cycle back to that point, I think they're, it's fu just this new appreciation for the seasonality of life and this idea, like you mentioned, you notice like, Hey man, like uh, you can own 10,000 companies. If you want, you can yep. make a billion dollars, Yep. but when you're fucking gasping your last breath, are you going to give a singular shit about any of that? If you just fucked off all of the people in your life that loved you. Right. Yeah. You won't. You no. won't. No. You won't. <laughs> and, and I saw, I saw it firsthand. I saw yeah. it firsthand uh, about a year ago. Uh, my dad went through a, like a heart transplant. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, and so you got to see him in that condition. Like the dude that you think is indestructible suddenly uh -huh. isn't. And, yeah. and you really start to think about stuff. You're like, okay, like at the end of the day, like, what are we, what are we kind of doing here? Yeah. Type of thing, you know? So I, I think that kind of helps put things in perspective and you realize, you know, one, you don't have all the time in the world. No. Nope. Too like the things that you chose you choose to spend your time on are incredibly important. Like, yeah, yeah. Whether it's projects or you know making sure you're spending time with the family, yeah. all those things are just way more important than you think. Like, and so you're more intentional with your time yeah. when you see that. You're like, you know, whatever I'm doing right now is this is this gonna lead to kind of where I'm trying to go? Yeah, you know, really take a look at it. I love that. Was was your your dad's health issue was really a catalyst for that change for you? Yeah, it was it was definitely a big one. It was a big one. Um cuz you saw you see a guy that's worked his entire life, just worked his ass off mm -hmm. every single day. Like I'm talking like 4 a.m. till freaking 2 a.m. Yeah. Like he could get 2 hours of sleep a night. I saw it every night. Like just not healthy. <sighs> so no no um, secret where your work ethic comes from though. And, yeah, I mean yeah. he he taught me how to work hard yeah. and and he even told me he's like one of the worst things um he, he told me he's like one of the worst things I taught you is to be a workaholic. This mm -hmm. is like uh, you know, like when he was going through his heart stuff. And I yeah. took that to heart. I was like, you know, yeah, you're probably right. And, and that really made me take a look and change the way I was doing things. Yeah, it sounds like that well, that made you make some tough decisions. Where it's like you're And it worked out better too. Like yeah. like really if you spend all your time grinding, you're gonna be less effective and less of a fun person to be around. Um, yeah. Hundred you know? percent. So Yeah. Yeah, I've always yeah. struggled with that. You know, in those videos I was talking about, there's a lot of people in the comments like, oh, easy to say when you're like you're retired and rich with money. And like, I get it. Like there is a level of, of there's, there's this kind of the obvious, you need money to survive, right? And there's mm -hmm. various ways to do that. Everyone has to find their own path in life of how they support themselves and their families if they want them. Um. But that's to me. That's what it came back to. It was the seasonality. Like, yeah, there is, there are the years where I think you just you have to be obsessive about something. If if you have aspirations that go beyond maybe what the normal person might want, like there needs to be an imbalance. But don't ever, you know, don't ever think that. I don't know. Just the importance. I I just you know my folks too are in their seventies and the same thing. I think about this all the time. It's like you. Yeah. I saw this this graph recently where it's like amount of times you the amount of times left you are going to see your parents and like one yeah. through eighteen it's like hundreds of times and then like every yeah. decade after twenty it's like by the time you're like in your thirties it's like you you know you might only if you see your parents two three times a year you probably are going to see them like fifteen more times <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean I was like what the fuck. Like, Dude, it's crazy to, to quantify. Prioritizing, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I saw that for kids too. Like yeah. I saw it for um. There was uh, maybe it was the same thing, but it was like um, you know, your kids. If I have a nine year old, she's turning nine. Okay, like, half of the time that she is going to be like in my home that I see her like every day. Yeah, it's pretty much gone. That's it. Like hopefully yeah. and hopefully she's not living with me forever. But, <laughs> right. uh, but like it's gone. These goddamn you know, interest rates don't change. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She might be living here for a long time. Yeah. But uh but you, you start to quantify it and you're like like half of it's gone already. You already it's gone. Yeah. You know, and it just gets a lot more real when you start to think about it mathematically. Yeah. Know? Yeah. I don't know. It's just it's just being self aware. And that's the, everything in my life comes down to like just don't lose sight of a what you're doing this for, why you're working hard, 
mm-hmm. and try to find the balance. I think with everything, whether it's fitness relationships, it's like finding balance, but also the respect and appreciation that sometimes you're just life is going to be in balance and that's okay. Yeah. Um, but do the, do the best you can to just make sure you're spending time with the people you care about. hundred percent. Yeah. 100%. What, what, um, how many, how many on this topic of kind of like downsizing and reinventorying your, your entrepreneurial venture, entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial, <laughs> it's a tough word for me to say. I it's a tough one, dude. It's fucking sucks. entrepreneurial, uh, it yeah. ventures. How many, how many businesses are you a part of now? Is it mainly just, I see like player one coffee. Are you in that one or is there? Yeah, I'm still yeah. kind of involved in that one. I've got another one that's like, uh, with another influencer and then I've got, um, like a holding company and a couple other, like for, uh, rentals and, um, some real estate stuff. Yeah. Which is like a good, like tax benefit. Everyone knows real estate's yeah. great. For Dude. Business. Real, yeah. <laughs> business real estate. That's, that's my next yeah. venture is to try to yeah. get the, get the LLC to acquire some commercial properties. That's the way to go. It's <laughs> the best move you'll ever make in your entire life. <laughs> it's good shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I got a bunch of stuff like that. And then, but really like my day to day is, um, is focused on meta now, which it didn't used to be that way. Like I used to really dabble in a lot of other projects and stuff, but, um, in order to make this what I want to make meta, I need to, to focus on it. So that's why I, you know, kind of move things around too. Yeah. I would imagine that part of some of the growth you've seen over the last couple of years is because of you reconcerting mm-hmm. your efforts into yeah. kind of a singular basket in a way. Yeah. Like we're making content now. And I think that started about, about a year ago, we started posting daily content um, that we were procuring ourselves. It wasn't just photos of computers. Like we were making things to provide value to people. Yeah. Um, and that was a, a factor of me like being more involved in like, okay, let's run this the way it's supposed to be run. Let's educate people for free and not ask for anything. Yeah. So we make videos where we'll tell you how to like set up a new PC that you built yourself. Yeah. Which is like so counterintuitive. We, we see a lot of people go, why on earth <laughs> are you publishing stuff like this? Yeah. When you sell the computers, it's like, well, if they get benefit or they think, Hey, maybe this is too much work. Hopefully they'll consider us, yeah. you know, and, and it's worked well for us. Um, so a lot of that is, is born from me being able to spend more time on the marketing end to be like, okay, let's provide stuff that actually brings people value, whether we get anything in the moment or not, because eventually we will, whether it's that person or like a friend, cause you always get someone, especially you've built computers, mm-hmm. you get a family friend, you build a computer for, and they're like, Hey, I'm having issues with this thing. Right. You're like, shit, now I'm it for the next five years. <laughs> you know, That's hey, true. You're, and you've you signed up for it. You've co-signed that computer. You signed man. up yeah. for it. Yeah. <laughs> you did it. But so what we get is a lot of people that are like in their thirties, forties that used to build computers oh. that say, you know what? I got a family, I got kids. I don't want to be your it. I know these meta PCs guys will take good care of you. Yeah. We get, quite a few referrals like that. So, you know, a lot of that switch of time, I think has helped to create like a more long-term vision yep. for the company. And a lot of that's been delivered through content. Cause I've watched people like you, like I've watched you, I've watched Oompa. I've watched a lot of people in the space that I respect and seeing what they put out. I'm like, how can we try to make it like fun for people too on the computer side without being super salesy, you know? Yeah. I think that's so important. I just, in any business relationship, it's like, you know, you got to, you, you got to give if you want to expect to get something in return. And I think in the content model, especially too, it's like, if you're consistently putting out content that is, uh, you know, selfless in the way that it's like, Hey, people might find this valuable. We're not looking for anything in return from this content. You're just building that level of trust with someone so that when the time comes, if they need this particular thing, they're like, why wouldn't I go to this guy who's just like, they've Mm -hmm. never tried to hook me or whatever. Like they've just made cool content that I appreciate. And I'm curious, how is your relationship with YouTubers and other people? Mm -hmm. Has that been a very integral part of your business and the growth? Like I just, I know this is an obvious strategy. Like influencer marketing is, is not a secret anymore, but it's like, how that's I imagine part of the marketing spend, all these things. Like how how mm-hmm. has that helped you guys grow over the past couple of years? 
it's helped a lot. And I, and I know it's, it's really tough for people in our industry to, um, especially on the YouTube side to compete with some of the bigger brands that come in, like you get manscaped and they want to throw a dollar amount for an mm, ad spot. And sure. Like, sure. I know I won't get that return right. out of that ad. Like if I were to spend it, I'd be like, I, I knew, I know I'd be wasting my money. Yeah. Um, so we try to get creative with it and we try to find other ways to integrate with creators that make sense that are authentic to our brand, whether that's like, co-branding a video that we do together yep. like we did a video with caleb francis where like i was able to be in it which was kind of fucking cool. no big deal but, my <laughs> but doing like pretty well in front of the camera handsome face down 60 uh, pounds no big deal <laughs> i'm not fat anymore that helps uh but like we we try to we try to like integrate where we can do some crossover stuff where i feel like some brands may maybe they don't have that you know, advantage or, or someone in house that can make that type of content. So, yeah. um, we try to be strategic with it where it serves our interest. Obviously we want to get something out of it, but we also want the creator to feel like they're able to have like really reign over the style of what's being made. It fits sure. their content. They're sure. not doing like an ad read. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. It's something that makes sense. So that's kind of how we've worked with YouTubers is we've looked at their content. We've said, does it integrate well with us? Let's do like a promotion with like system or some type of like we'll work something out. But um, yeah, that, that's kind of how we've approached it. it as opposed to like, let's place an ad for 60 seconds and this is the thing. And yeah, like, no, that you know. and that's kind of why I ask is anytime I, I see meta PCs come up and creators that I follow, it always feels very cool and natural. And I think mm -hmm. that's so important. And, you know, I, I've worked with so many brands over the years and the, the campaigns we do that the, that are the most successful are always the ones where they let me have most of the control. So anytime they're like, oh, you have to do this and read this and make sure you do that. And it's like, ah, like, <laughs> okay, my, my audience is going to know I'm just fucking sitting here in front of a script. So there's like, yeah. that's such an important piece of the marketing is just like, and like you and it depends on what it is too. Like, it's not hard. Like when you build relationships with people with people, and like they use your product, they like your product. Like it's a win-win for everybody. It's like they love your product. You're you're getting some brand exposure through collaborating with them. They're getting mm -hmm. whatever they're getting. It's just it's it's the fucking best, man. When you can find that sweet spot of influencer relationships for whatever the whatever that particular brand is. I've Dude, talked 100%. about this with my wife really recently, where I've spent so many years working with brands and Raycon has been one of my biggest supporters for years. I'm going on like five or six years with them. And oh, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's been a blessing to be able to have that as a revenue source, but I'm like, man, I'm, I feel like I have so much acumen now in this particular space. Like why have, I need to create a business or come up with my own product because I feel yes. like I could be good at selling it. I yes. just have, uh, I have a bit of imposter syndrome that I've always dealt with as somebody who is, spends time making content online that I won't get into, but it's like, I, uh, I think I could be good at it. I just don't know what it would be. And I don't want to, I'm very, you know, I get pitches all the time from people that are like, Hey, we do this thing. Let's partner and do that. And like, I mm -hmm. want it if I'm going to co-sign something that's like a business that I have a piece of, I really want to make sure that's something that I'm uh that it's your th own. that I'm like, yeah. yeah, this is gonna be not only my own, but it's like, hey, this isn't just because I'm trying to make money. This is because I think this could be valuable to people it's that a watch good me. Product. Yeah. yeah. And there's obviously merch and merch is merch. But uh yeah, that's kind of I think my next co you know, venture over the next couple of years is as I'm getting to this age and I'm doing content that's a little more longer form. It's like, how can I, what can I, what can I do to try to bring more value to the people that have been with me all these years? Mm -hmm. uh, what does that look like? I know there's. That's, it's huge. Like that influencer, these influencer led brands and I've helped <laughs> and I'm working with a couple influencers on stuff like that yeah. um, where we've launched companies. So if you ever yeah. want to talk about that, that's great. But yeah. um, there's, it, it makes a whole lot of sense for creators to launch <laughs> yeah. their own brands because yeah. I mean, you're already driving all this traffic. Yes. Right. And you're driving yeah. it for, for whoever and, and great relationships. That's awesome. But if you can create a product that's like authentic to you and your community and it resonates and it's yeah. good, like it'd so, be great if it was good. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's um, rule number one. It's a no brainer. Like, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, but there, there's a lot of opportunity that, and Umpa is like, and you've you've talked to him, but I was gonna say he's example. like he's my I you know, and I'm whatever I'm a decade older than him or more, but I I look up to him as somebody who is so good, yeah, uh, at that entrepreneurial piece of taking his audience. He has built such an incredible team that allows him to make fucking. 40 minute commentary documentaries that he uploads four or five times a week. He runs a candy business, Sour Boys Now, that's doing really well. So I have, uh, I hold him in such high regard as someone who's really crushing it in the, in the influencer space that makes entertaining videos, but is also selling something that's authentic to him. And mm -hmm. it's very, it just seems to come very naturally to him. Not to say, like, he's also in that phase of his life where I don't think there's a lot of balance. Like, this motherfucker is working. He's grinding. He yeah. is he yeah. is grinding like a tell. son of a bitch, yeah. right? So, yeah. like, no kids. Like, he's now mm -hmm. moved in with his girl, Chris, who seems like a sweetheart. Yeah. So I love to see it. And I'm just like, you know, I, I'm a little old. I, I don't know if I could grind that hard right now. So I got to figure out what that <laughs> looks like for me. <laughs> there's some version of that there's, that makes sense. Yeah, though, there's right? some there's some boomer version of that that could yeah. work for me as I'm around in the corner on 40. Oh yeah. Some bidets or something like that. Hell yeah. There's something out <laughs> yeah. there, dude. You got Are it. Are you tired of reaching around to wipe your hairy ass? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. You Hell might yeah, have dude. just fucking nailed it for me, honestly. I feel like I could sell a bidet pretty well. Just do the bidet stuff, dude. That's it. <laughs> I will help you source it from China. I know just the place. Oh Let's get my it done. God, imagine no influencer has started a fucking bidet business. No, this is all you, dude. Yeah, there's got to be places you can branch into from there, too. Like, where oh, do you, But where do you go to from a bidet? That's a tough... Uh, do sanitary Let's wipes? This. Dude wipes? Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. Oh, yeah, get a little dude. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Just the bidet. Yeah, get just the bidet. bidets only. High-end platinum 24 carats... <laughs> Ten thousand dollars a month. Gaudy yeah. bidets, hell yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was just, I need to, I, I'll service the high end bidet niche. Yeah, twelve thousand diamond crusted you. platinum gold twenty four k. Oh my god, dude, that, you, dude, that's fucking amazing. Listen, Zach, I appreciate your time so much, man. It's been such of course, a man. joy getting to chat with you, learn yeah. a little bit about you. Uh, I'm hoping we can do this again sometime. Before we sign off, I, we've kind of talked about this a little bit. I think in just our conversation around, you know, reprioritizing and really thinking about w what matters to you and how you spend your time that is so important. But, you know, as someone that's in their mid thirties, wh what is it, you know, what is living a decent life look like to you? Cause for me, it's all I'm trying to do. Like, I feel like every day I, I, I oftentimes don't know what the fuck I'm doing Mm -hmm. But we're all just kind of waking up trying to live a decent life. What's that look like to you as like that maybe it was different when you were 17 and now your 30s, like when you're 65, 70, what's you what do you want your legacy to look like? Yeah, I think I think a lot of it is especially when you have kids. Mm -hmm. It's like you want to be someone that um that your kids look up to. A hundred percent. And and that and dude, that really changes everything, you I know. Agree. Um yeah. in terms of decisions that you make. So yeah. Um, I, I think it's just, it's being someone that, uh, that someone can look up to and, and leave a legacy of hard work and also being someone that, uh, cares about others, I think is very important, you know? Yeah. yeah that's, that's something I've been trying to learn and get better at, but, um, I think is like, is key for sure. Yeah. I just th like living, moving in such a way that people, family look at you with love and respect. I think that's, yeah. that's what it is. And when you carry yourself, you're a hard worker, you're, you're congenial, you, you smile, you care for people, you're worried about your relationships in a way that is genuine, worrying, not worrying, but caring genuinely about other people, I think is, is unbelievable. And like you said, that was for me, having a, having a son, there's just what a, what a mindset shift in how I carried myself moving forward. I'd unlocked a, it unlocked a level of empathy in me that I didn't mm -hmm. know existed. And this is coming from the guy that you know, I, I've spent years making videos where I'm criticizing kind of shitting on people where it might seem like, oh, this dude's a little bit calloused and there is that piece of me and the internet's done it. But man, I, sometimes I'll be, I'll be caught off guard with this feeling that wells up inside of me when I see something that, and that all kind of came from this relationship I had with the son and this kind of level of love that you mm -hmm. might not have experienced previously. 100%. So yeah, that that was beautiful, man. Just fucking 
Oh, it's so it's so great to get to talk to you, man, and get to know a little yeah. about you. And I hope that people listening and people watching were able to gain some valuable insights as far as what's going on in the in the PC, the PC oh, yeah. industry, building PCs, and just what it's like to be an entrepreneur hustling the different seasons of life. And uh, man, have a great rest of the week, and I hope to have you back on soon. Thanks for having me on, man. I appreciate right. it. It's a good right, time. Sec.